today what we're doing is we're going to do what is called the light spec demo. So if you have a blank sheet of paper out, we're first just going to start by taking notes on this sheet of paper, okay? So let's start off, write your name, write the date, and then we're going to call this the light spec demo lab. Okay, we're going to call this the lab, light spec demo lab. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off by listing the materials and what materials we're using. And we're gonna draw them out and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the materials that we're using as well. So the first thing that we're gonna have is we have these diffraction gratings. So we have these diffraction gratings and they look like little glasses, okay? First thing is diffraction grating. So write this down on your paper. And what these do is they basically act like a prism to break light into its components. Okay, and so let's draw what these glasses look like. So, um, so here's my best drawing. I'm gonna go straight across, come back down. There's a little hook at each end, so a little hook at each end. Then it opens back up again, the little nose part in the middle, and then back again. <laughs> not very good, but it's not too bad. This is the diffraction grading part, okay? of the glasses. So you can't see, but if you look at it, maybe if you look up to the light, you might see that they have, it has small, tiny, tiny little slits, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to just take a look up at the light and see what happens when you look up at the light, and then we'll talk about that in just a second. We'll actually write our notes down in just a minute. Let's finish writing down our materials here. The second piece of equipment that we have is called the power source. And the power source is a black box. So the black box has two metal springs on the inside. Those are going to be where the electrodes go in. And there's an on-off switch and then a cord so that we can get electricity run through. So let's draw what the power source looks like. So the power source is this black box here. And we've got these two parts right here where there are metal springs inside of there, metal coils that are on the inside there. And then there's an on-off switch, and then it plugs in, so there's an outlet for that, for that to plug in. We also have what are called gas discharge tubes. Gas discharge tubes. And what these look like is all right, so what the gas discharge tube looks like is it's a long tube, it has a particular gas in it, kind of like a light bulb, okay? It just has these metal electrodes, and what happens is these are gonna plug right in, not onto the board, but they're gonna plug in uh, into the spaces where the electrodes go on here. So we've got a metal part, there's a little metal part, and then it kind of comes straight down, and then it just comes in. And so you have different gases that are inside of here. So that just comes in, and then I have another metal electrode part that's at the other end there. So these are called the electrodes. And inside of here is a gas, a vapor, okay? So if it wasn't naturally a gas at room temperature, then we would call it a vapor. So like water, for example, um, they vaporized it and then put it in here. So there's a gas that's on the inside of here. And what we're basically going to do is we're gonna pass electricity through the gas phase of these different elements or substances, all right? And we're gonna to check to see what happens, what happens to the color, and what happens and why do different things happen, okay? So the second part of this, after the materials, is we are going to draw atomic emission spectra. Spectra is plural. Spectrum is singular, okay? Spectra is plural. So we're gonna draw some atomic emission spectra. We're gonna do it for two, all right? We're gonna first do it for um, hydrogen. Let's do hydrogen first. And so this is H2 gas, hydrogen gas, it's H2 gas for neon. And then I will show you other neon gas. I'll show you other atomic emission spectra, but 
um, you'll be able to look at them through the glasses, but um, you won't have to draw them out. You only have to draw hydrogen and neon. And if you draw it well right now, and you do it as best as you can using colored pencils, then you'll be able to attach this sheet to your typed summary later on, okay? So you won't have to redo it. So if you do a really nice job now, then you won't have to redo it later, okay? So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the power source and we're gonna try this out and see how this works, okay? And then we'll talk after about what's happening and why, okay? So do you wanna... Okay, so what I have here is I have the power source and then I have a tube and inside of this tube I have hydrogen gas, okay? So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna turn off the lights I'm going to turn this on and we're going to check to see when you look through these diffraction gratings, you're not looking at the center color, you're actually looking to the sides, okay? And I want you to see if you can see a band of colors. And the coolest thing about this is every single element has its own fingerprint. And I'll show you using that spectrum chart what hydrogen spectrum looks like and I want you to see if it matched up to what we thought it was going to be, okay? So we're going to turn off the lights, you're going to have your glasses on and um, we're going to check Turn that off. And then let's turn the screen off. Okay. Do you see? We're going to look in the order of Roy Biv. So we're looking to the left, because if you look to the right, it goes purple, then blue, and then red. Do you see a strong red band? Yes. yes. Okay. Those background colors shouldn't be there, by the way. That's from the air. There is air inside of there that they didn't, um, they didn't get rid of. You're going to see in the next one we do a neon, it's a lot better. That's gone. But in hydrogen, it shouldn't have that over there. Okay, then do you see two blue strands, not one. If you're further away, you might actually see the blue strands a little bit separated a little bit better. But if you're close, the blue strands look like they're together. Do you see two blue strands? Okay, last hour said they saw something in the blue region. Do you see a blue band? Yeah. Some of you are seeing it. I couldn't really see a strong blue band, but some people were saying that they definitely saw like a, and it looks in the shape of that light. It looks like that blue band. Okay, let's turn this off, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to draw this out. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw what we saw, but before we do, we're gonna take a look at the spectrum chart, and the cool thing is that every element has its own band, its own fingerprint, okay? And so here's hydrogen right here, and the way that this is set is it actually gives a frequency or a wavelength. In this case, they give us a wavelength, which are related by the constant C anyway, okay? But on this, they give us a wavelength, and so it says that there's one, um, sorry, let's go to hydrogen, there's one strong red, did you guys see that strong red band? Yes. yes. Then there was a bunch of black space, and then there was blue. They actually have, in the violet and the blue region, they have two, okay? So that's the fingerprint for hydrogen. And each element and each gas will have its own fingerprint. And people will ask, how is it that they were able to figure out, if we could never get to the sun, how is it that they know that there's hydrogen and there's helium on the sun? We couldn't go there or get even anywhere near close to it to be able to take a sample. So what they do is, they basically are able to split the light, and based on what fingerprint that you get, you can actually tell what elements are there. So same thing with the planets, where people are like, we don't understand how they know what types of elements or what, um, what particular compounds are on different planets. How are they figuring that out? And it's basically just the idea of matching frequencies. Every single color is a different frequency, okay? So whether it's a blood red, or whether it's one of the lighter reds, or whether it's an orange or an orange yellow, or a green or a turquoise, that makes a difference on its frequency. And I'm gonna tell you that every single frequency is one packet, okay? So we're gonna talk about all these in just a little bit. So let's draw hydrogen first. So I'm gonna get my red, and um, I'm just gonna draw a strong red band, okay? Then um, I saw uh, blue-green, but I don't have blue-green in my panel, so I'm just gonna use blue on mine. And I saw space in between. Now you may have seen the rainbow in between, but again, that shouldn't have been there. It was just that the sample wasn't pure, okay? And there was some air that was mixed into it. Again, when we see neon, you'll see it'll be a little bit better. So I'm gonna take my blue, and I saw two blue strands, and they were right next to each other. I knew that there was something that was in the violet range, that maybe you saw a band that was out here in the violet range, okay? In between, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna shade in as if it were black all behind it, okay? So after you get your colors, then you can just shade. You can just use your pencil to shade if you want. So just go put your pencil at an angle. 
and just shade in. So all of this is getting shaded. And then in between here, I'm going to shade in between there. In between the two blues, I saw black. In between space. It was empty space. So let's talk about colors for a minute. Because someone asked in a different hour and said, um, what is it about the colors that we see? Isn't it true something about the colors that we see are either the ones that are reflected or the ones that are absorbed? I can't remember, okay? What is the case? The ones that are absorbed are the ones that you can't see. Awesome. The ones that, are, that you do see are the colors that are what? Reflected. reflected. But we're not going to use the word reflected. Okay, we're going to use the word emitted. Okay, and then someone raised their hand and said, Mrs. Smell, I thought that emitted meant that it was taken out and it was gone. No, that's omitted, okay? Emitted is emission, um, so like what's being emitted or what's in the emission, so that's different. What's emitted is the one that's going to be reflected. That's the color that you do see. The one that's absorbed are the colors that you don't see, okay? So let's, uh, the next thing is we'll end up looking at neon gas through the spectrum. So put an image in your mind so that you can draw it, okay? And I'll talk about it so that way it makes it easier for us to draw. So again, go to the left of it. Does this one look cool? Yeah. Okay. So if you want, spin your glasses a little bit. So take them off and just spin them a little bit, and it kind of looks cool too. So the light in the middle, the orange color, is all of them mixed. The ones that are being reflected, those are the ones that are all mixed together. But now we're splitting it into the left or to the right or on top or on bottom. What you're seeing is the splitting into those colors when we split it with the prism. Do you see two reds with black space in between them? Yeah. Okay. Then they're lights. Then you see darker reds in a row, and there are probably like three or four of them. Yeah. Okay. Then do you see black space and then orange? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Then there are different shades of orange. Then black space, do you see a strong yellow? So a couple of reds, a few reds, a few orange, but then maybe two strong yellow bands. And then space, do you see two greens with black space in between them? Yeah. Okay, a faint, but there are two greens with a little bit of the black space in between. Now maybe, do you see, anybody see blue at the end? Okay, maybe. I didn't see too much at that other end. Okay, so let me turn the lights back on here. Okay, so let's look at what neon looks like on our spectrum chart. So on neon, they have one, two, three strong reds. They have a strong orange. They have a couple of strong yellow bands. They have some in the green region. And then they actually did have a couple in the blue, which we weren't seeing too much of in that blue region. But we were definitely seeing the reds, the oranges, the yellows, and a little bit in that green. We're not going to draw this. We're going to draw what we saw. Okay? So that is the fingerprint for it, though. And if we were to match frequencies, they would match. So in other words, the red that is that red would equal a particular wavelength okay, of red light. So let's start with the red. And I saw like two kind of faint ones on the side. And then I saw some darker reds. And they had black space in between. Okay, then um, the orange. I saw um, a couple of orange bands. and they kind of mixed in together. And then after that, I definitely saw some space, but then I saw um, a strong, really strong yellow band. So the yellow band was nice and strong on there. And then I saw some empty space, and then I saw a couple of greens. I did not really see anything beyond that. I didn't see the blues, so I'm not gonna draw the blues. And then we're gonna shade it. Okay, so everything else would just be black. Let's talk about white light. Take a look through your glasses, through your diffraction gratings, and I want you to look up at the white light, okay? Or I want you to look back behind you and look at the light. Okay, and what do you see? Okay, so do you see red? Yeah. Do you see or orange? Yeah. Yellow? Yeah. Green? Yeah. Blue? Yeah. Purple? Yeah. You're seeing all of the colors of the spectrum. Okay, this white light is called a continuous spectrum. Why continuous? It has all the colors. 
And the reason why it has all the colors is because every single frequency or wavelength of light, every frequency of light is being, I'm going to say quote unquote hit or emitted. Okay? Every single one is being emitted. And that's why when you have white light, we're actually seeing every single color. What does black mean? Perfect, that's void of it, okay? So, where the black spaces are, let's talk about the black spaces for just a minute. The black spaces are where that frequency is not being emitted. That frequency or wavelength of light is not emitted. Okay, so that's a difference between seeing every color and then seeing black spaces. So what we saw when we, when we passed the electricity through was we saw some black spaces. So let's talk a little bit about that, okay? So now we're gonna do, so we're gonna take some notes on here. And what you're gonna do is as I speak, I want you to jot down anything that you find important. You can just bullet it. I'll try to bullet some of it with you too, okay? And then what's gonna happen is you'll end up coming back up to the top and you'll answer these questions. So these, number one and two, these you can just uh, say see attached because what you can do is you can just attach your notes to numbers one, uh, for numbers one and two and that way you don't have to redraw anything. It just says to draw the spectrum band for two different elements. We already did that on this page. So as long as that's good, then you're all set, okay? Number three says, what is physically done in the experiment and what do you see? Pretend that someone just put a microphone to your mouth and said, what did you just see in this lab? And you're going to write blah, 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 what happened physically in the experiment, okay? Physically done. So what did we physically do? What we physically did was we used the power source to supply what? What did the power source supply? Electricity. Perfect. Electricity. And what happens when we supply the electricity is the atoms do what with the electricity? They actually absorb energy. They absorb energy. Okay, now I'm going to have you. Okay, so imagine that a child ended up eating a whole package of Sour Patch Kids. Okay? What happens to the kid? They end up going on a... Sugar. sugar high. What happens to the kid on the sugar high? They're crazy. They're like, ah! maybe their shirt comes off and they're screaming and they're yelling. And what eventually happens to them? They crash. They come down. Ah! They come down from their sugar high and then they fall asleep or whatever else happens to them. Okay? Let's try this again. So what's going to happen is the atoms are going to absorb energy, like a kid being on a sugar high. Absorb energy absorb energy, absorb energy, and now they're on this high. We actually say that the electrons become excited. Everybody say excited. excited. Really, we use that word in science. But what's wrong up here? What's unstable. wrong with me? It's I'm unstable. Awesome. Everybody say the word unstable. unstable. We are going to use that word. Unstable is what the electrons become. They are not stable up here. They're at a higher energy level, further away from the nucleus. So what's going to happen is the electrons are actually going to fall back down, just like a kid coming back down off of their sugar high. What do they do as they come down? They let out what? Energy. energy. Awesome. Similarly, the electrons are going to come back down, ah, letting off energy. Okay. Now, they're not going to come any down any further than where... Um, they started, so they're going to jump up to higher levels and then they're going to fall back down. And depending on where they fell and how much energy was released, the energy is going to come in packets, and that energy that's released equals one specific color or one specific frequency. Okay, so let's recap. Okay, so we're going to recap now. So the atoms are going to absorb the energy, and when the atoms absorb the energy, something happens to the electrons. The electrons become excited awesome they become excited and when they become excited they jump to higher energy levels okay but at these higher energy levels the electrons are actually now what's the word 
unstable. Electrons are, in all caps, unstable. So they're not going to stay at that higher level. What ends up happening to the electrons, so the nucleus is still here, it's the electrons moving. Just from the electrons falling back down, the electrons are going to release energy as they fall back down toward the nucleus. Toward the nucleus, okay, so if you want to write that in. As they fall back down, that's when they release energy. They don't release energy going up. They only release energy coming down. And what is this energy in the form of? Some type of radiation. Light. Visible light. As electromagnetic radiation, in this case, as visible light. Every single color equals a different frequency or wavelength. Every color equals a different frequency or wavelength of light. Okay? And it comes in packets. These packets of energy starts with a Q. Anybody want to guess what these packets of energy are called? Start with a Q. Quanta. Perfect. If it's plural, it's called quanta. If it's singular, it's called a quantum of energy. Okay? So again, why the black spaces? The black spaces are when the frequencies are not being what? Emitted or hit, right? So as long as that, spa that, um, that frequency is not, packet of energy is not being hit, then you're not going to get that color. So you only get the colors where the electron jumps up to a higher level and where it falls back down. And it keeps on happening, and that's why we get multiple colors. But every single one is going to have its own fingerprint.